let us begin in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit. O my Jesus, forgive us our sins, save us from the fires of hell. Lead all souls into heaven, especially those most in need of thy mercy. Our second ticket, our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. <clears throat> Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Amen. 
Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit. Oh, my Jesus, forgive us our sins, save us from the fires of hell. Lead all souls into heaven, especially those most in need of thy mercy. Hail, Holy Queen, Mother of Mercy, our life, our sweetness, and our hope. To thee did we cry, we're banished children of Eve. To thee did we send up our sighs, mourning and weeping in this valley of tears. Turn then, most gracious advocate, thine eyes of mercy toward us. And after this, our exile, show unto us the blessed fruit of thy womb, Jesus. O clement, O loving, O sweet Virgin Mary, pray for us, O Holy Mother of God. Let's offer now in our Father, Hail Mary, and a glory be for Pope Francis in his health and his well-being. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit. We conclude with our Lady to St. Joseph. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Christ, hear us. God, the Father of heaven. God, the Son, Redeemer of the world. God, the Holy Spirit. Holy Trinity, one God. Let's pray for us. Holy Mary, Saint Joseph, noble offspring of David, light of patriarchs, spouse of the mother of God, chaste guardian of the virgin, foster father of the Son of God, zealous defender of Christ, head of the Holy Family, Joseph most just, Joseph most chaste, Joseph most prudent, Joseph most courageous, Joseph most obedient, Joseph most faithful, mirror of patience, lover of poverty, model of workmen, glory of domestic life, guardian of virgins, pillar of families, comfort of the afflicted, hope of the sick, patron of the dying, terror of demons, protector of the holy church, lamb of God who takes away the sins of the world, Lamb of God, who takes away the sins of the world, graciously hear us, O Lord. Lamb of God, who takes away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. He has made him Lord of his household and prince over all his possessions. Let us pray. O God, who in your loving providence chose blessed Joseph to be the spouse of your most holy mother, grant us the favor of having him for our intercessor in heaven, whom on earth we venerate as our protector. You who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit.
Good morning. Welcome to everyone and to those people joining us on the live stream as well. We're glad you're here to worship with us. Today we're celebrating the second Sunday of Lent, and we hear the readings that talk about the transfiguration on the mountaintop. You hear the phrase, Behold my beloved Son. As church, we stand. Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, and the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. My brothers and sisters, let us acknowledge our sins, and so prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mysteries. Lord Jesus, you raise the dead to life in the Spirit. Almighty God, have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Let us pray. O God, who have commanded us to listen to your beloved Son, be pleased, we pray, to nourish us inwardly by your word, that with spiritual sight made pure, we may rejoice to behold your glory through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. Amen.
A reading from the book of Genesis. God put Abraham to the test. He called to him, Abraham. Here I am, he replied. Then God said, take your son Isaac, your only one whom you love, and go to the land of Moriah. There you shall offer him up as a holocaust on a height that I will point out to you. When they came to the place of which God had told him, Abraham built an altar there and arranged the wood on it. Then he reached out and took the knife to slaughter his son. But the Lord's messenger called to him from heaven, Abraham, Abraham. Here I am, he answered. Do not lay your hand on the boy, said the messenger. Do not do the least thing to him. I know now how devoted you are to God, since you did not withhold from me your own beloved son. As Abraham looked about, he spied a ram caught by its thorns in the thicket. So he went and took the ram and offered it up as a holocaust in place of his son. Again, the Lord's messenger called to Abraham from heaven and said, I swear by myself, declares the Lord, that because you acted as you did in not withholding from me your beloved son, I will bless you abundantly and make your descendants as countless as the stars of the sky and the sands of the seashore. Your descendants shall take possession of the gates of their enemies, and in your descendants all the nations of the earth shall find blessing. All this because you obeyed my command. The word of the Lord.
A reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Romans. Brothers and sisters, if God is for us, who can be against us? He who did not spare his own son, but handed him over for us all. How will he not also give us everything else along with him? Who will bring a charge against God's chosen ones? It is God who acquits us. Who will condemn? Christ Jesus, it is who died, or rather was raised, who also is at the right hand of God, who indeed intercedes for us. The word of the Lord. be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Mark. Jesus took Peter, James, and John and led them up a high mountain apart by themselves. And he was transfigured before them and his clothes became dazzling white, such as no fuller on earth could bleach them. Then Elijah appeared to them along with Moses and they were conversing with Jesus. Then Peter said to Jesus in reply, Rabbi, it is good that we are here. Let us make three tents, one for you, one for Moses, and one for Elijah. He hardly knew what to say, they were so terrified. Then a cloud came, casting a shadow over them. From the cloud came a voice, This is my beloved son. Listen to him. Suddenly, looking around, they no longer saw anyone but Jesus alone with them. As they were coming down from the mountain, he charged them not to relate what they had seen to anyone, except when the Son of Man had risen from the dead. So they kept the matter to themselves, questioning what rising from the dead meant. The Gospel of the Lord. Matt's going to get the uh, projector fire, um, fired up for you. We are going to present a little project that we've been working on this past year uh, here at St. Therese, a project for our school. But as that uh, warms up there, I want to point out to you, behind you on this side of the church, uh, we have the six uh, stations that have been hung up uh, that are in. So we have stations one through seven uh, that are here now. We're still missing station five. Uh, where Simon of Cyrene uh, carries the cross. Uh, this next year, uh, next year, this next week, oh my gosh, next year, I'm going to die a thousand deaths if it takes that long. Uh, it, the, all the lighting in the niches is going to be uh, fixed up this next week, so when you come in next week, God willing, everything in the back will be uh, much uh, lighter. Uh, in Station 7 over there, uh, Jesus is missing just a couple of fingers. We'll get that fixed uh, there. Uh, what happened actually was a cat actually snuck into the, one of the boxes 
eye and started chewing on his fingers, which is totally unacceptable uh, for us. That should not surprise us, though, that that would happen uh, there. But that's no problem. We'll get that fixed. It's not a big deal. As I mentioned, we are working on a great project uh, this past year. And I uh, brought uh, together about a year ago some members of our school community uh, to look at our, our school and the growth of the school and as well as the faci uh, facilities and to get the feedback of what we're doing well and what could be uh, improved uh, in terms of our school community as well as our school facilities, the building itself. And from that meeting, there was a, a desire to look at our facilities to see uh, where maybe they could be improved or reconfigured, and maybe where we can uh, uh, f fix them a little bit so that they can serve the growing uh, school uh, community because our school has been growing leaps and bounds. What I did then is I, we formed a little committee that met regularly uh, to talk about our facilities, uh, and it included parents, teachers, uh, Adam Grebner, our principal, uh, members of uh, our parish community. I see uh, John's over there, John Boyer was on there, uh, Dan Duffy was our architect, and so we had great conversation around our school and our school facilities. After a year long of conversation uh, from those meetings, we identified three uh, key areas in our school uh, that could be improved, namely the east entrance, the main entrance to the school, and I'm going to show you a picture of that here in a second. Uh, building a uh, media center with technology where our library will be, and it'll also be a welcome center, a landing spot for families and prospective families of that nature, and where lots of education can happen. Additionally, we thought that where our infants and toddlers are taken care of, that that could be uh, better. So we're going to uh, build. Uh, new rooms for the, our little itty bitty ones, little infants and uh, toddlers. And then finally, the lower level or the basement of the school is in pretty rough shape, and it's been in rough shape for the last probably 10 to 20 years. And that certainly needs to be looked at and remodeled. So let me show you some pictures here. This is Louie and Zelly, the, the church there. And that's somehow good. And that, apparently that's me. Uh, that's a two and three year old that uh, drew that of me. It's not that you see that's, that's, that's how they see your priest right there. So this is what, uh, when you come out of the main building here uh, and you look to your uh, right, uh, that is the main entrance of the school. And right now it has a big uh, horseshoe uh, shape that is cut into there. And if you ever ask yourself, what is going on there? Why is that there? Why, why isn't there building there? Uh, because there's actually a well uh, that's there. And so they kind of cut into that building for that well. What we're going to do is we're going to move that well and take the well out of there and then build that out, uh, that part of that, that entrance out for us. And we do have a final picture of what that's going to look like. And again, uh, the idea here is that we want uh, the entrance of the school uh, to be very welcoming, uh, especially for prospective families and for our school families and parish families. We really envision this as a, a great meeting spot and a lot of conversation and building community, uh, learning for students, uh, technology, uh, faith formation can happen there in the evenings. Uh, I could have fireside chat with parents and things like that. We re really see this as a beautiful uh, sort of spot for when you first come into the school here. Uh, kind of a community building uh, place for our school. Our senior citizens from Deep Haven Woods uh, to welcome them uh, over here as well. What is there now is the infant and toddler rooms. Is when you, so if you don't know that, that's when you first walk into the school, that's where the babies are being taken care of and the uh, toddlers are taken care of in that little area. Right now it's two different rooms and it's gonna become one very, very large uh, room after this project. This is the west side of the school, the west entrance of the school. And right now, uh, it looks like this, and it's got the kind of the metal on there, which was uh, added later. And so we're going to remove that part of the building and expand uh, that part of the building out to the north. Uh, what is there now is two things. One is it's a huge sort of vestibule walking area uh, that will be removed. And then the maintenance room, a very large maintenance room is there right now next to the gym. 
and that maintenance room is nice it is it as it is it's on prime real estate and so that is going to be moved and that is where our new uh, infants and toddlers for our early learning center is going to be built uh, there so what's going to happen is uh, parents of infants and toddlers are going to drop their children off on the west side of the school now and walk them into the school on the west entrance uh, instead of everybody using the same entrance, which is getting really quite busy, it's becoming like uh, Penn Station in New York or something, it needs to cut down a little bit on the traffic. So some of the parents will be dropping off students on the west side, and, and some of the parents dropping off their students on the east side once this is complete. The lower level of the school, as I mentioned, it's pretty outdated. Uh, it's not the first place that you would go to. Uh, if you were excited about our school, if you've been down there, it's got really old carpet, uh, the painting, everything is just really, it just looks very, very tired. Uh, it's also got a couple of bathrooms down there, and uh, those bathrooms do not meet code whatsoever. They're way out of code, and really, frankly, quite a dangerous because we have little kids standing up on stools uh, to wash their hands and things like that. So those have to be completely remodeled. So we will be remodeling our entire uh, basement of the school with new carpeting and uh, lighting and painting. And we're also going to create two new classrooms uh, down on that lower level of the school to accommodate the growth of the school. So what will happen here, I'm going to show you a floor plan. It does not come up on our projector very well. It comes up on the screen, I think, for those at home very well. Uh, but that's the wrong one there, hold on a second. What we're gonna do is we're gonna create a much smaller uh, teacher lounge uh, that will be right at the bottom of the steps and then we're gonna create two more classrooms because the media center is getting moved upstairs and then the teacher's lounge is gonna become an extra classroom. So uh, the idea here is that we wanna have two classes. Uh, this will buy us a couple more years, two kindergarten, two first grade, to second grade and to third grade. So this could get us all the way to two third grade classrooms. Our goal is to get all the way up through fifth grade to fourth grade and to fifth grade classrooms. So we are speaking now creatively about how we can do that. And so what will happen is uh, what's called phase two. This is phase one. Uh, phase two is not part of this project. Our goal is to build actually a little tunnel uh, that will connect the school and the lower level of the community room. So we'll actually go right below the entryway when you come on the west side here, and then we'll develop or remodel the entire lower level of the community room with two new classrooms down there. So we have the space there. We just need to utilize the space better that we have. So phase two, which is in the future, uh, we'll be remodeling the entire lower level of the community room and uh, youth room down there, uh, two classrooms, better lighting, new carpeting, everything, so it's much more welcoming there. And then you can go back and forth through the tunnel from the school to the lower level of the community room. That phase two project will get us two classrooms from kindergarten all the way to fifth grade. Middle school has its own building, so that's, we don't have to worry about that. But the lower level, or the, the original part of the school in 1959, uh, we do have to create some more classrooms for the growth of our school. We have a couple of pictures of what it's gonna look like. So when you walk out of the building, uh, what it will look like is uh, basically a glass uh, kind of curtain uh, wall that will match the front of the school, which has those glass curtain walls. So whenever we make a change to any type of building, whether it's in the parish or the school, we always do in a way that it looks like it's always been there, that you can clearly say it's not been an add-on. So we wanna make it look attractive aesthetically and make it look like it's always been a part of the building as well. You can see that this room, the way it's gonna be designed is gonna be quite beautiful in the sense that tons of light will come into this particular space and I envision this to be a very very busy space for our school. Additionally when you walk into the main entrance of the school 
that will be largely glass as well, that you can look into that room as well. So lots of sunlight will pour into that room with natural light. There will be technology screens in there and things like that for classes, students to read, little benches for them to sit on along the wall, like to get some sunlight as they read, to talk and to do things that students love to do, to, to be together and things like that. Uh, so we envision this to be a really quite lovely space and very attractive, by the way, for prospective families that come and say, wow, this is fantastic. I really like this a lot. Like, I want my kid to go here. I want to be a part of this particular community. So it's kind of the face of the school in some sense. Additionally, the main floor in that main hallway when you walk in is going to be redone as well because it's looking tired with the carpet and everything. This is now what the back side will look like on the west entrance of the school. And the idea here again is to make this look like it's always been there. So that metal will be removed and the stone uh, will be repurposed. So I believe we can use, reuse like 80% of the stone uh, there for that building. So we're gonna make it look like it's always been there. So that will be built out uh, to accommodate for our little ones, infants and toddlers. They're gonna get their own little bathrooms with tiny little toilets and things like that with little kids. Okay, this is not really my world, I'm gonna be honest with you here. So those of you that have little kids know that they have to have, everything needs to be small for them, right? So little things uh, for them. Uh, they're, so they're gonna have their own bathroom and changing tables and things like that. That is my last screen. So the idea here is uh, we want to make things look really beautiful and we want to reconfigure things uh, in our facilities so they're better serving of our community. Uh, in terms of um, cost, let me talk about cost because that's a big concern, is uh, you know that uh, August of 2019, uh, we received that really generous gift uh, from Patricia Florence of $2.6 million dollars. Uh, that came into the parish, which is unrestricted, and then an additional $500,000 for tuition assistance. Uh, John has done a great job with his crew of obtaining bids for this project, and the bids have come in, and the project is going to be $1.6 million is the estimate for this particular project. The Finance Council has approved $1.3 million for the project, which means we have a $300,000 gap that's there, which then comes to Father Andre to raise the money. And uh, I'm happy to tell you that we have raised the money, or I have raised the $300,000 difference that was required. So that's part of my job description is part-time fundraiser, is to find the extra money for this. So we have the $1.6 million. Uh, the project is fully funded, so it is not financed in any way, shape, or form. The Finance Council has been very uh, insistent that we maintain $1 million in the bank for reserves, roofs, HVAC, carpet, things that fail, you know, so, and when we run deficits and things like that. So we need to try to maintain a nice cushion uh, for things that happen in a parish. And so that is the goal is to keep that $1 million uh, cash uh, in the bank for the parish. Timeline, uh, we will, final plans will be completed in the month of March. Uh, hard bids will be obtained in the month of March. We'll work with the city for the permits also in March and April. Our goal is to begin construction on the infant and toddler rooms on the west side of the building first. Uh, in late April is the hope to begin there. And then the lower level of the school and the media center, we're looking at uh, summer and fall for those particular projects. So we'll be having lots of construction this summer and in the fall. And the hope is to have the media center construction completed by the late fall, uh, God willing, by Christmas, right? So with all the construction that's going on. In the bulletin, you will find a four-page insert with all the details about this project laid out for you. If you are watching online, uh, we are sending out an email blast uh, to all the parish, who, all of you who are on the email server list, as well as the school email list at 12 o'clock today. You are free to share that with whomever you would like to share with that with at that time. At 12 o'clock, that will be coming out. 
Catherine is returning from vacation uh, this week. When she gets back, she will post this information to our parish website so you can see the four-page handout with the final drawings, frequently asked questions, the cost, all of the uh, details about the project. After reading that information, if you have any further questions, uh, please do not hesitate to contact me. I'm happy to answer them. Uh, just a hearty thank you to everybody who served on our committees for this particular project, whether you're a parent or a teacher or a John or a Dan, and truly grateful for the amount of time that they've given. A lot of time has been poured into this particular project, and it's all volunteer time, so they've given their time for this project. We have some very, very, very talented parishioners here who've given their time for our school and our parish, and I'm truly grateful. In closing, I do realize this is a very big investment in our school. However, I believe it is a very critical one and a very wise one as well. The school is really the lifeblood of our parish and the future of our parish. And we need to continue to invest in Catholic education. And I think it's a great way to honor Patricia Florence and her legacy by pouring this money into our community and our school community. I'd imagine that she'd be very happy with our decision of how to use her gift to our parish. May the good Lord continue to bless our parish. We're truly grateful for the generosity and the opportunity to continue to strengthen our community. My brothers and sisters, now let us stand together and profess our faith. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten not made, consubstantial with the Father, through him all things were made. For us men and for our salvation, he came down from heaven. And by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. We should pour forth prayers at all times, my dear brothers and sisters, but above all in these days of Lent, we ought to watch more intently with Christ and direct our petitions more fervently to God. For the church, that it be a holy place where the spirit of Christ is present and alive, and that all people are joyful in his presence, as were the apostles at the transfiguration. We pray to the Lord. For leaders of nations, for economists, and for po politicians, that God's radiant light will shine on them, and that they will bring true peace with justice to their people. We pray to the Lord that just as the apostles saw the glory of God in Jesus, so we may all see God's glory every human life, even when frail and feeble, we pray to the Lord. For all military men and women here and abroad, 
we pray to the Lord. For all couples bearing the cross of infertility, that they may find strength for the journey as they join their sufferings to Christ, we pray to the Lord. For those who have recently died, especially Philomene Schultz, may they enjoy the blessed vision of divine glory forever, we pray to the Lord. And for the people of St. Therese, for whom this Mass is offered, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Grant, we pray, O Lord, that your people may turn to you with all their heart, so that whatever they dare to ask in fitting prayer, they may receive by your mercy, through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands for the praise and glory of his name, for the good of all his holy church. May the sacrifice, O Lord, we pray, cleanse us of our faults and sanctify your faithful in body and mind for the celebration of Paschal festivities through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. 
It is truly right and just our duty and our salvation always and everywhere to give you thanks. Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, through Christ our Lord. For after he had told the disciples of his coming death, on the holy mountain he manifest, manifested to them his glory to show even by the testimony of the law and the prophets that the passion leads to the glory of the resurrection. And so with the powers of heaven we worship you constantly on earth and before your majesty without end we acclaim. Sanctus, Sanctus. Sanctus Dominus Deus Sabbat, Pleni sunt celi et terra gloria tua. Hosanna in excelsis, Benedictus qui venit in nomine Domini. Hosanna. You are indeed holy, O Lord, and all you have created rightly gives you praise. For through your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, by the power and working of the Holy Spirit, you give life to all things and make them holy. And you never cease to gather a people to yourself, so that from the rising of the sun to its setting, a pure sacrifice may be offered to your name. Therefore, O Lord, we humbly implore you by the same Spirit, graciously make holy these gifts we have brought to you for consecration that they may become the body and blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, at whose command we celebrate these mysteries. For on the night he was betrayed, he himself took bread and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice and, giving you thanks, he said the blessing and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. Therefore, Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the saving passion of your Son, his wondrous resurrection and ascension into heaven, and as we look forward to his second coming, we offer you in thanksgiving this holy and living sacrifice. Look, we pray, upon the oblation of your church, and recognizing the sacrificial victim by whose death you will to reconcile us to yourself, grant that we who are nourished by the body and blood of your Son and filled with this Holy Spirit may become one body, one spirit in Christ. May he make of us an eternal offering to you, 
so that we may obtain an inheritance with your elect, especially with the most blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, with your blessed apostles and glorious martyrs, with St. Therese and with all the saints, on whose constant intercession in your presence we rely for unfailing help. May the sacrifice of our reconciliation, we pray, O Lord, advance the peace and salvation of all the world. Be pleased to confirm in faith and charity your pilgrim church on earth with your servant Francis, our Pope, and Bernard, our Bishop, Andrew, his assistant, the order of bishops, all the clergy, and the entire people you have gained for your own. Listen graciously to the prayers of this family whom you have summoned before you. And your compassion, O merciful Father, gather to yourself all your children scattered throughout the world, to our departed brothers and sisters, and to all who are pleasing to you at their passing from this life. Give kind admittance to your kingdom. There we hope to enjoy forever the fullness of your glory, through Christ our Lord, through whom you bestow on the world all that is good. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. At the Savior's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. And give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace, I leave you my peace, I give you Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Amen. Let us offer each other this sign of peace.
Behold the Lamb of God, behold Him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed.
Let us pray. As we receive these glorious mysteries, we make thanksgiving to you, O Lord, for allowing us, while still on earth, to be partakers even now of the things of heaven through Christ our Lord. A few announcements for you in the weekly letter that comes out on Friday. If you're not on that email list, I highly suggest that you get on it because lots of information comes out every week about the parish. Namely, we have a uh, Minnesota mission team of overture and in international. It's called a, a quilt auction for those in Haiti. Uh, we know that those in Haiti are uh, suffering uh, very much. That auction is going to take place from March 1st to the 7th. Uh, the link is on the newsletter. It's also uh, in the bulletin today. You can see the, uh, the link that's there as well. Uh, the Shroud of Turin talk by Mark Hushke was uh, fabulous on uh, Tuesday. So if you, if you didn't get a chance to see that, that link again is in that newsletter that comes out each week at uh, Friday at 3 o'clock. Uh, the drive through uh, fish fry was uh, very well received. Uh, we had over 300 meals served. It's a record number here at St. Therese. Uh, we also know that some of the wait times were quite long for some of you. We do apologize for that. Uh, we're looking to fix that for the next time. Uh, the next fish fry is March 12th, uh, so please order your meals by then. Uh, we're beginning to take donations for Easter flowers very soon as a, they are a memorial for a loved one. Uh, these obviously decorate the entire sanctuary in the Easter season. Uh, forms for that are available online. Uh, as well as uh, taken after the Masses the first um, three weekends in March. I have a note here from St. Martha's Circle that they're going to be teaming, teaming up with Gertens uh, in Invergrove Heights, actually in my hometown, uh, this spring on the, to, for a plant sale. Uh, so please plan on ordering your flowers and plants through uh, St. Therese this year. They're doing some fundraising for the parish, the school, and other community organizations. The delivery is on May 1st. So that's a great timing for Mother's Day. Ordering information will be available next week. Our staff put to get, puts together weekly videos that come out on Sundays on the virtues. Uh, so if you go into the Lent section of the website, you can see those videos. They do a nice job on those. And again, we're trying to raise that money for Feed My Starving Children, 26,000 to pack 108,000 meals. Even though we won't be packing in person this year, there's still lots of uh, hungry mouths out there. So we do ask for donations for that. And then a reminder that we do pray the rosary Tuesday through Friday at 3 o'clock. That's both in person and live stream as well. And then after the 10 o'clock mass today, we're going to be taking everything off of the sanctuary area here uh, because the floor is going to be cleaned, uh, desperately needs it, and sealed as well. So the entire sort of exposed aggregate area here. So. We're going to need some help after that Mass to remove the altar so that it'll be cleaned on Monday and Tuesday so there'll be quite a kind of a smell in here for a few days, but we'll put up with that to have a nice floor. Uh, very grateful for the beautiful singing uh, this morning, and uh, certainly be safe and uh, careful when you go home because it is pretty slippery out there. The Lord be with you. I you to bow down for the blessing. Bless your faithful, we pray, O Lord, with a blessing that endures forever. And keep them faithful to the gospel of your only begotten Son, so that they may always desire and at last attain that glory whose beauty he showed in his own body, to the amazement of his apostles, through Christ our Lord. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Go forth, the Mass is ended. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God.